What is up everybody, Gary Simon here. Let me show you exactly what we are going to be creating today. So look at this snazzy little person here writing on this little notepad. This is just for a fictional email collection form. Uh, check that out again, very exciting stuff. Of course, that is a Lottie animation. If we click join list, we have a bunch of other stuff happening. Look at that, we got the mail sending off. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do this today in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript that is, and it's gonna be helped with Lottie as well as the Greensock animation platform, otherwise known as GSAP version 3.0. All right, make sure to subscribe, let's get started. Oh, and by the way, if you're really interested in learning CSS, then definitely check out designcourse.com forward slash CSS, and we're going to make learning CSS fun and interactive. And essentially, this is my upcoming course on learning CSS in an inter interactive platform at designcourse.com. And so that is going to be coming up later this year here in 20, 2022. And enter your email address to be notified when that is released. All right, let's get back to it. All right, so the first thing we are going to do is uh, create our new project here. So if I, type, if I hit open folder, I'm going to go into my code. Code, there we go and create a new project called um, email sub, I guess. There we go. And then select folder. Yes, I trust myself, essentially, unreal. And let's get started with a new file. So um, we're gonna do an index.html. And by the way, I have the browser over here because that's what we're gonna be referencing as we create this project. And our index.html, exclamation point enter for our abbreviation and then also we will type in link and CSS forward main.css. All right, so that doesn't exist yet. So let's create our CSS folder and our main.sass file. And in order to watch that, you need the live SAS uh, comp compiler extension over here. Just get that installed and we will watch it after you have it installed as well. So it creates our main.css file that this is looking for. All right. so. We're gonna start with our HTML, um, and I'm going to first, uh, we're gonna first create a container for a Lottie animation. Now the Lottie animation uh, itself, for this particular, there's gonna be two of them in this project. This one is gonna be the little flying paper airplane. By default, that gets hidden. So I'm just gonna put it here first, and we're gonna call this success, and control B, by the way, to get rid of that sidebar. And then inside of it, we're going to put our Lottie animation. So for those of you who may not be aware, we go to uh, lottiefiles.com and you simply search for something uh, if it really hold on lottie files. Oh, no, it looks like my web is down. All right, here we go. My internet was down for literally seven hours. So this is fast forward seven hours. All right. So anyhow, lottiefiles.com, it's basically a way to, to integrate awesome animations on your website. And so you can search for different animations like loading or loader graphics, and you can just choose these. And when you click on one, like say for instance, this one, uh, it gives you a Lottie animation URL. All right, so if you look at the YouTube description here for this video, there's going to be two of these .json file URLs, and these are actually .json URLs, as you can see right there. And I'm, that the, the two of those are what we're gonna use. Now, if you type in um, embed Lottie, then you'll also find the Lottie web player, and that's what we're gonna use as well. And we just wanna make sure, we're just gonna turn off um, controls and autoplay. Um, and we can copy this uh, top, well, you could copy both lines actually, and then we'll just come back down and we will paste that in right here. All right, so for the first URL, it is going to be, I, I'm gonna, this is gonna be for the success one, as mentioned. I'm just going to replace this source attribute with this one. So that's gonna be the top one here in the YouTube description. Um, let's get this positioned up and we're gonna take this script source right here. We're just gonna put this at the bottom outside. All right, so we're gonna paste that sucker right there. All right, so I now we can go ahead and save this. And if I, we also hit Control B, right click, open with live server. Um, you have to have the live server extension, by the way, so you can do that here in the extensions area. And momentarily, it's going to load up. 
I'm going to go ahead real quickly and just put this right here. So we don't see anything playing because we took off the autoplay. Um, all that does on that web interface is if we just add it right here, autoplay right there and hit save. There we go. We can see this little tiny kind of flying airplane animation. Um, we don't want it, that to happen though. We're gonna actually trigger that in JavaScript anyhow. So for now, uh, let's continue on. We're gonna just have an overall form container that holds everything. So form hyphen container. And then inside of there, we're going to have um, a, a, another, the second and final Lottie animation that's gonna be at the top. And it's just a really cool scene. Uh, it's really put together well. And so we're gonna put uh, in, that inside, inside of its own container called on start. And I'm just going to paste in exactly what I have on my reference code. We do have autoplay turned on, so it will be there by default. And we also, if we look over here real quickly. Oh, by the way, we don't want this style right here width and height on that top one. Yeah, so all that we have on this one is autoplay. We don't have it looping. You could probably loop it. In fact, I think it would be cool to loop that this animation. But if we save this, here is this cool animation it's still playing and then it just loops so it just keeps on going over and over so you could choose to you know loop that if you wish uh, next up is the actual uh, content so for that we're going to put it right underneath our on start element and we're going to put in h1 um, the class is going to be called seq for sequence um, animation we're going to do that with gsap and you'll see what that is in uh, in a little bit want to wish to subscribe okay <laughs> and then we'll put a label for equals email and then again we want to add a class sequence because this is going to be a part of a sequence animation on click where we just kind of hide everything and it falls out uh, so email address is going to be this label um, our input type is going to be text and the ID equals email why is it doing that for some reason I uh, Visual Studio Code started like whenever I, I hit a um, quote, it sends me outside of it, unreal. I'm not, I'm not sure what happened here. So anyhow, um, and then also class the sequence as well. All right, uh, outside of that, we're also gonna have a paragraph of sequence as well. And then we're gonna put, don't worry, we won't hound you with emails like our competitors. Yeah, right, bunch of liars. Okay, so now I will have another line and this is going to be the final one um cta and sequence as well let's put this there and then sequence this is actually going nowhere uh join list all right right there awesome and then finally we're going to put a, a if we just save this we'll see what this looks like looks like garbage so far we're going to put an h2 and it says success and that's what's going to show at the end so by default that is going to be hidden Okay, so now let's go to our main SAS file, and I'm not gonna be writing and typing this out all by default. I'll just kind of paste these rule sets in, and of course, this is gonna be available on CodePen, so you can get all this code as well. Um, asterisk is for everything. We're just changing the size of box sizing, border box, or not the size, but the property of box sizing border box to, to border box, um, and that's just simply, there's an area for the, the text field uh, where, um, it will set it to that property specifically so that we have to deal with this overflow issue. Um, we'll also have the body, and the body, very simple. Um, we just have margin zero, height, 100 viewport height, display grid, place content center. These two elements just center vertically and horizontally the, the, um, the, the form containing element, the div. Font family pop-ins, already have it installed. Um, I'll probably import that later, you'd wanna import that. And then background, is just a very light pink. All right, not very much has changed. Uh, after that, we're gonna take our form container and inside of here, we just have a max width of 400, uh, background white, giving it a shadow, border radius, uh, padding, and position relative because we are gonna have this element right here, um, this Lottie animation is gonna be position absolute and then we're just gonna kind of push it up top. So this, this parent container of this element has to be position relative before we can do that. Um, H1 element, just gonna give it some margin here, 3 EM on the top and then also 0.5 on the bottom. Um, we're gonna have our H2 element, which is the success element. And we're just styling that up and we are going to save that right there. Opacity is zero, so it's hidden. You don't see it now. 
Um, we also have our success, and this is where we're positioning that, position absolute. Uh, let's save that, and then also the Lottie. I forgot, I forgot about this. For our Lottie animation right here, we're gonna give this a class of Lottie itself, and that's the element that we're going to actually reposition. So, actually, no, I'm not. Let me make sure. Okay, this repositioning is gonna come in, in a little bit. <laughs> I forget which element it's placed on. Uh, we're gonna have our label. We're just styling this section up over here. We got our input, which is just the text input. It's our only input, so I just chose to specify input as a selector. Um, then we have our call to action. All right, making that nice, consistent color with the rest of the scheme. Give it a little bit of border radius. Our paragraph right here, nothing special will happen there. There we go, on start. This is the part where we reposition it. Uh, absolute and top is negative 200 pixels. There we go. So that's the final design. Uh, and I think it looks pretty snazzy. I would certainly want to join an email list if it had all this stuff going. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to get to the more exciting stuff, which is the JavaScript. So Control-B. Um, oh, the, the JavaScript's inline anyhow, so we're just going to come down here. And before we start actually writing our JavaScript, we do have to use GSAP. Now, the reason I'm using GSAP is just because there is a sequence animation applied onto here, uh, and we could change a few other things, and it just makes it super simple using their timeline. So uh, if we go to here, and let's get out another browser window, and we type in GSAP 3 CDN, we come here. Oh, wait, no, <laughs> we don't go there. We click here, the very top result. And then we go ahead and choose this one, copy. Uh, actually, copy script tag right there. All right, so we'll just paste that in right there. And now we're ready to rock. Okay, so after that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create an instance of the timeline. So we're gonna say let timeline equals G's, new GSAP dot timeline defaults. We're going to set a default ease of circ ease out. All right, so easing, if you don't know, it just kind of changes. Like say for instance, if you have an animation that's one second long, uh, it might start it out quicker and then maybe go slower. Um, if you type in GSAP3 easings, you actually find an interactive easings uh, documentation and it lets you know all these different values and it shows you what they look like. Um, so now we're gonna also create an instance of our call to action button. So document.query selector and it's called, it has a class of CTA. And then also const player, we're gonna get access to our Lottie player, which has been included right here. All right, so const player equals document.query selector, and we just target Lottie itself. All right. All right, after that, we're gonna put TL pause. We wanna pause this uh, animation by default, but I'm gonna wait until I do that. I'll put it here and just comment it out actually. So pause is true. We are going to just comment that because we'll, we'll, I want to show this stuff, you know, uh, as we write each line. So timeline two. So we're going from these initial values in CSS based on the elements we're going to target to whatever is going to be specified in this method. So in the first parameter, we chart we target the actual selector, and that's sequence. We've applied that to a bunch of different elements. Um, and so it's gonna iterate over each one of those. We're gonna put, it's gonna go to Y, so it's gonna move it down 40 pixels. All right, then we put opacity zero. It's gonna go up from opacity one, which is the default, to zero, it's gonna hide. And then stagger, we're gonna say 0 0.05. Stagger means, uh, because this, this, there's gonna be multiple uh, DOM elements with the sequence class applied to it, or the SEQ class, um, it's, gonna, it's gonna take this animation and at 0 0.05 seconds, um, apply a stagger animation to it so that they don't all happen at once. Um, so if I save it, that's what it looks like. And when I refresh, it just, you know, it does that. Um, and then finally, we're gonna keep on adding maybe two more. Uh, timeline two, we're gonna take our form container and then also hide that as well. So we're just gonna put opacity zero so this is what happens when somebody, after somebody submits and clicks that button, that email, uh, 0.4. And this, this third parameter right here is optional. 
Uh, if you want it to happen sooner, this this element, or this animation rather, than this negative right here, you could also make it happen uh, later with positive. Uh, you could put this parameter right here. So that's what we have going there. And then finally, we have our last one, timeline two is H2. That success element, opacity one, right now it's zero because we specified that in the main SAS file. Uh, duration is gonna be two, a little bit longer than the default duration of, of one. And then Y20, just to move it uh, vertically a little bit. And then also we're gonna make this happen a little bit later of one second. So there it is. Okay, now finally, we need to get that other animation playing over here. So what we'll do is take our call to action button and add it in event listener of click. And then inside of here, we're gonna say timeline play. All right, so right now we're gonna bring this back so now it's not going to animate because it paused it. It's only going to play on click like that. All right. And then finally, we're going to set timeout. All right. And we are, let me put that final parentheses there. I'm screwing this up. Error function. There we go. We're going to put in player, which is defined right here for our Lottie animation dot play. All right. And I'm putting it at a, a, a um, 800 millisecond um, delay on this from here because I, I, I don't want that little air, airplane graphic, you know, occurring right on the click. So this gives it a delay. So we click this and there we go. A little snazzy little animation. So um, I would say uh, we don't want that to, to loop. All right. So our success, if we go over here, let's take off loop. You could also control the speed, by the way, as well, which is pretty cool. Let's refresh, click this, and there we go. Look at that. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, everybody, hopefully you found that fun. Every now and again, I like to do interesting, short, simple little projects like that. If you'd like to see more of this, let me know in the YouTube description and I will see you all soon. Goodbye.